Chapter 11 Evil Priest Camp You are listening at NovelFull.audio Rapid Growth Matthew was delighted. This was also the druid's signature spell. The green growth liquid he used to plant trees was the potion version of this spell. Its effect was lowered since the spell had been modified into a potion form. If he could master this spell, his ability to plant trees would be comparable to a real druid. Shapeshifting and rapid growth are the signature skills of druids. It seems that the rewards for the quest maintaining is also very important are all druid abilities. No, perhaps it has nothing to do with the mission but with my means of completing it. Whether it's dealing with the arsonists or the order of calamity, I have killed. In that case, is the system working in reward? The reward given for planting trees was the bone dragon of the necromancy element. But the reward for killing and fighting was related to druidism. Matthew pondered with interest. There were not many samples at the moment, so it was not enough to make a conclusion. But this did not stop him from making a bold assumption. He glanced at the bottom of the mission panel. The Tai Chi symbol had a new change. The green dots on the left had already exceeded two dot thirds. It was not far from being fully charged. He just didn't know what would happen if it was full. On the other side, the gray light spots were still very faint. However, it was much better than before. Matthew had sharp eyes. He could see that the gray speck of light at the bottom was trying its best to surge upward. Whoosh! The dot of light rushed to the one-third position. The heart of nature and the path of the undead. Matthew guessed. The rapid increase of the gray light spots should be related to the battle tonight. The operating mechanism behind it still needed to be explored. But not now. Near the farm. Some people had already discovered the disaster there. More and more people came from the town and the countryside. Matthew led the team back to the oak forest. He sent the skeletons back to the cave. Then, he said to Peggy, I'll have to trouble you to walk back by yourself. Peggy exclaimed, It's so dark, and you want me to walk alone at night. I'll be afraid. Matthew coughed. Then I'll summon the skeletons to keep you company. Peggy said hatefully, You don't give me overtime pay and want me to walk home by myself. Necromancers like you really have zero consciences. Matthew shrugged. I'm not that capable of teleporting you back. You have to understand me, Peggy. Peggy's heart softened a little. All right, all right, I'll go back alone. But next time I work overtime, you have to give me at least one soul crystal. When we signed the contract back then, you said as much. After sending off the talkative tower and skeleton, Matthew looked to the north. The merchant's ghost had mentioned the chaos in the ghost castle. Combining that with the contents of the secret letter. Even if the stronghold of the Order of Calamity was not within the ghost castle, it should be nearby. Time was tight. Matthew planned to eliminate the threat as soon as possible. Thus, he leaped. Whoosh! A raven flew over the branches under the moonlight. It headed northeast. The divination results are out. The enemy's location has been confirmed. They are in a valley near the ghost castle. In the main hall. A middle dot aged man with a thin face, fully armed, was calmly patrolling the surroundings. Some of the people present were stung by his burning gaze and unnaturally looked away. There were also some people who raised their heads excitedly to welcome the other party's gaze. They yearned for a chance to gain the recognition of the Lord of the Suki family. Blake and Anne, each of you take a team and surround them from the southwest. You have to be fast and be careful of ambushes. Mr. Zeller, please continue to contact the advanced wizards of Bai Yen City or Stormflow City. If there is anyone who is willing to help, agree to any conditions. Just as I expected, our enemies are not bandits who are blinded by money. They are a bunch of lunatics, scum, and cultists. As I said before, the Suki family will never compromise with such evil scum. Your mission is to kill every villain you see. 
that's all. In the quiet hall. The Lord's voice was loud and clear. A series of strict and unyielding orders were issued. Those who received the specific mission were all delighted. But gradually, there were also people who looked puzzled. Sir, will our radical actions agitate the other party? After all, Miss Sif is indeed in their hands. An exceptionally handsome young man wearing a magic robe spoke. This also echoed the doubts of the other people present. The Suki clan was indeed famous for its tough attitude toward its enemies. However, the problem now was. Young Miss was in the hands of those villains. If they followed the Lord's method, Sif's survival rate would be so low. Everyone stared at the Lord in confusion. The latter said coldly, it's because they have Sif that we're doing this. He did not explain too much. Instead, he said to the handsome man, Mr. Zeller, in addition to contacting the advanced mages, please pay attention to the clues we found before. Sif couldn't have been kidnapped out of thin air. You should understand what I mean. Zeller nodded solemnly. Everyone, please take action. Use your fastest speed and your strongest strength. The Lord waved his hand. The people in the main hall gradually dispersed. In the end, only the Lord was left alone. He strolled to a window. Not long after, an owl flew in. To be honest, I don't understand the men of the Suki family very well. You're clearly worried about your daughter, but you still make decisions that might harm her. The owl asked in confusion. The Suki family's lord took a deep breath. In front of everyone, I will always be the head of the Suki family and nothing else. Every word I say represents my family. The Suki family would never compromise with evil. This is our motto. The owl was even more confused. Then why did you call me over? The Lord said, I know you can transform into a giant eagle. The owl nodded. Yes. Take me to the ghost castle, and the favor you owe me back then will be written off. The Lord said decisively. The owl thought for a moment. He nodded and said, sure. But it seems that the patriarch of the Suki family wouldn't take this risk. The Lord tightened his grip on the sword at his waist. At this time, I'm also Sif's father. An hour later. The raven flew over the barren mountains under the moonlight. Occasionally, a ghostly wail could be heard from afar. The ghost castle stood at the highest point of the barren mountain. The fog around it never dissipated. Even if the moon hung high in the sky tonight. Matthew could only vaguely see the outline of the castle. He stared at the mountain fog. He had a bad feeling. It was as if there was a pair of eerie eyes staring at him in the fog. It said that before the castle was abandoned, it was the former residence of a hero of the human kingdom. It was once prosperous and noisy, but after a strange disaster, a large number of people living in the castle died. The survivors fled in a hurry, and no one could tell what happened. Later on, it wasn't that no one explored it, but the adventurers who dared to barge into the castle didn't manage to come out in the end. It was as if they were swallowed by the fog. The last time someone explored the castle, it was a famous necromancer in Bai Yen City. He got the news from somewhere and publicly declared that the secret to immortality was hidden in the castle. He insisted on entering it. The necromancer was no exception. When he was exploring the castle, he had a fierce battle with a group of demons from the lower world, the old Anababas, outside the gate. Therefore, the castle was also called the Anababa's castle. He recalled the conversation he had with Blake. Matthew suddenly felt a chill run down his spine. His perception told him. This castle was not something that he could explore at his current level. Fortunately, his destination tonight wasn't Ghost Castle. He avoided the strange fog. The raven leaned to the west. After a while. In the middle of the mountain range ahead of them, there were sporadic sparks of fire. It was a dangerous valley. There were guards at the entrance of the valley. 
However, the guard's attitude seemed to be more relaxed. Matthew naturally lowered his altitude. He glanced at the mission panel. Mission progress has been updated. You have discovered the evil priest's camp. Matthew didn't rush in. The mission target was an evil priest. This class usually had an extremely high perception. A sudden appearance of a raven could easily alert the enemy. He flew a circle around the valley entrance and skillfully stopped in the bushes beside the mountain path. There was a battle here. Perhaps even more than one. The mountain path was filled with corpses. There were humans. There were also smaller humanoid creatures. It was a lizard monster. Matthew made a judgment based on his knowledge. The wilderness is so convenient. For a necromancer, an ownerless corpse is a gift from nature. He decisively transformed back into his human form and began to summon skeletons. The incantation and Matthew's magic power injected a mysterious color into the messy pile of corpses under the moonlight. One by one, the skeletons stood up from the blood. Their condition was very ordinary. The soul fire in their brains was sometimes bright and sometimes dark, and the bones on their bodies were in a mess. Some of them were even a mixture of lizard monsters and humans, looking very strange and terrifying. This was the lowest dot level cannon fodder skeleton. They were nothing compared to the elites Matthew had hidden in the cellar. But it was enough to scare the layman. The magic wave of the undead summoning spell quickly attracted the attention of the camp. A fat man who was more than two meters tall moved over, surrounded by a group of minions. He was wearing heavy armor. Behind him, two teams of people were holding a huge battle axe and a mace for him. Hey! Necromancer! What are you doing? Fatty looked at Matthew with fear. Matthew was still summoning skeletons. Don't you have eyes? I'm giving these souls a new life. Fatty said angrily, they are my people. Even if they die, they are still my corpses. Matthew said arrogantly, not anymore. Bang! Fatty stomped his feet in anger. The already loose mountain path began to shake. Do you want to be my enemy? Matthew looked at him with a faint smile. Your body's grease can be used to refine a lot of corpse oil, but I won't consider making you my slave because your bones must have been worn out in order to support your body when you are alive. Kill him. Fatty was about to make a move. A dignified voice suddenly came from the camp, enough. Fatty was so angry that his entire body was trembling. Fine, let me kill him. How dare he mock my figure. No one dares to do that. However, the minions around him quickly dispersed. A man in a silver robe appeared in front of Matthew. He looked to be about thirty years old. He had blonde hair and blue eyes. He looked decent and had the temperament of a decent person. Tell us why you're here, necromancer. Otherwise, don't blame us for taking action. Fine looked down at Matthew. Are you fine? Matthew was also scrutinizing him. I killed an arsonist and found this. I'm interested in the business you mentioned, so I came here. He threw the secret letter over. Fine glanced at the letter. He suddenly laughed. You killed my friend and still dare to come looking for me. His originally dignified and upright face also became a little demonic because of this smile. If you would call that trash your friend, then I would be very disappointed, Matthew said rudely. Fine laughed. He used to be, but not anymore. You killed him, so you replaced him to become a part of our cause. Come in first, my friend. As long as you're interested in the great cause of the Order of Calamity, we'll definitely get along well. Chapter 12 Bone Dragon I already had it you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Thanks to the good image of the necromancer and Matthew's superb acting skills, he had successfully entered the evil priest's camp. However, he did not let his guard down. From beginning to end. He didn't even walk past Fine or the fat man. He hid in the middle of the skeleton soldiers. 
he followed behind them all the way. The fatty named Angeli was getting more and more disgusted by Matthew. Fine didn't say much about it. On the contrary, this was how a lone necromancer should behave. Evil, mean, cunning, cautious. It was obvious that he was not to be trifled with. The valley entrance was very narrow. However, the camp was surprisingly spacious. Matthew found some scattered pottery and utensils inside. These things were obviously not made by humans. This used to be the lair of a group of lizard monsters. He seemed to have seen the doubt in Matthew's eyes. Fine explained with a warm smile, I wanted to invite them to join our cause, but their shamans didn't appreciate it, so I had to kill them all. Matthew lowered his voice. It's fine. They still contributed their strength. Fine looked at the short skeletons among the skeleton soldiers. His eyes revealed a hint of praise. That's true. I've long wanted to find a necromancer to join us, but unfortunately, the necromancers in Bai Yen City have their hands and feet sealed by chains. They're too gentle, like wolf cubs raised in sheep pens all year round. Even if someone takes off the chains for them, they'll only be a whimpering dog. Fine's words were probing. This cunning priest obviously did not let down his guard against Matthew. Matthew replied disdainfully, the chain of desire cannot suppress the necromancer's pursuit of the truth. You only saw the surface of Bai Yen City. Fine smiled meaningfully. Perhaps. It seems that you know Bai Yen City better than me. Matthew pretended to snort. He did not continue to dwell on this topic but chose to take the initiative. Who is your sect leader? As soon as he finished speaking. The fat man, Angeli, was furious. You're offending the dignity of our lord. Matthew did not give in. Heh, yeah, as far as I know, there are a lot of scammers in the outer plains. Their strength is pitifully weak, but they pretend to be omnipotent. Do you understand what I mean? Fine. You're not the first evil priest I know. Evil priests. As its name suggested, this was a relatively evil class or profession. The power of the evil priests usually came from the sect master they served. Most of these sect masters were not from this plane, but they were abnormally powerful outer dot layer lifeforms. They could be fairies from the arcane wilderness, great evil spirits from the lower planes, creations of dusk whose bodies were buried in the astral plane, or divine sins sealed under the bridge of all life. The strength of an evil priest depended on how much power their sect master could project into the plane and how much the sect master cared for the former. Usually, the sect masters would not let their disciples be too weak. However, there were some exceptions. It was just as Matthew had said. The quality of the creatures in the outer plane was mixed, and it was inevitable that there would be a few people who were mixed in. Some evil priests were deceived by the outer layer creatures and did not gain much power, but they paid a huge price. Such examples were not rare. You do have some knowledge. Fine was still not angry. He chuckled and said, It's not convenient for me to tell you the name of my lord for the time being, but as long as you join my church, you will have the answer to everything you want to know. Inconvenient to reveal. Then he could eliminate the void ruler Yurkis mentioned in the secret letter. Sometimes, evil priests did not do things to please their sect master. Instead, they would try to please the people their sect master wanted to please. This means that the sect master behind him won't be too high in status. Matthew thought quickly. He still maintained his sharp and mean attitude on the outside. He looked around. Your church. With all due respect, these people don't look like they can do anything. They don't seem to have any faith in the church. There were about 40 to 50 people inside and outside the camp. This was not a small scale for an evil priest team. However, Matthew noticed that these people did not seem to be fanatical cultists. They looked listless. Fine blinked. They are just some helpers that I found in a hurry. Some of them are exiled prisoners that I bought from Black Lake Port, 
and the other is a bandit group that I have incorporated. It's reasonable for you to look down on them, but in the path of completing our career, we will always need some such menial characters. Matthew snorted, and his disdain became more and more obvious. You better show some sincerity and not waste my time here. All right, all right. Fine shrugged helplessly. I'll bring you to meet someone. I'm preparing to hold a ceremony recently, and she's the most crucial part. Deep in the valley. In a tall tent. Matthew saw a Sif. It was a young girl with brown dot red hair and a pretty face. Her skin was very clean, and only one or two faint freckles on the left side of her nose gave her a delicate and mischievous feeling. She was now wrapped in a thick blanket. She looked unconscious. Who is this girl? Matthew asked knowingly. The only daughter of the Suki family. Fine raised his head proudly. You should know what kind of bloodline flows in her body. As long as the ritual is successful, we can attract the heavenly fire to destroy everything. Matthew didn't say anything. He really didn't know what was so special about the bloodline of the Suki family. He tried to beat around the bush. How did you catch her? Fine didn't get carried away. This is something you will only know after you join the church. How is it? Sir, I've already shown enough sincerity, but you haven't even told me your name. Matthew said casually, you can call me Rog. If I join you, what can I get? Fine nodded. So, Mr. Rog. Our mission is to awaken the calamity through a great ritual. Every time we succeed, the Lord will bestow rewards and secret treasures. As long as you join us, you will also receive a share of these blessings. After you break through to the fourth level, my Lord might bestow you with a bone dragon. Bone dragon. I already have one. Matthew thought to himself that this evil priest was even better than him at making up stories. But on the surface, he still looked tempted. Then what do I need to do? Fine's eyes flickered. A small test. Since you were able to kill Heiss, you must have mastered the Death Curtain, right? Death Curtain. Necromancer Level 12 Spell. The effect was equivalent to a small, weakened version of the Undead Calamity. Where the Death Curtain covers the place all living beings would be quickly drained of their life force. Then, one by one, they turned into dead spirits. I do. Matthew frowned. However, the effect of this spell is not good. Even a disabled person has the opportunity to escape the range of the death curtain by relying on their will to escape. This was also the awkward part of the death curtain. It sounded very powerful on paper. Dot however, compared to the undead calamity, which had instant death, the death curtain's killing efficiency was so low that the victims could easily escape. Even necromancers who wanted to kill the innocent would not learn this spell. What if they stand still and let you kill them, said Fine with a smile. Matthew's heart skipped a beat, and he immediately nodded. Of course, that would change everything. Very good. Fine opened the tent door and motioned for the two to leave. They arrived outside the camp. He shouted, Angeli. Call everyone over. Then, he looked at Matthew and whispered, prepare the spell. Matthew refuted, are you crazy? Casting a spell in front of so many people, they will tear me apart. No, believe me, they won't. Fine said firmly. You did something to them. Matthew was puzzled. But why did you do it? Although these people are useless, they must have cost you a lot of money, right? Mr. Rog, you have too many questions. For the first time, Fine showed a hint of dissatisfaction. As they spoke, everyone gathered around. Including the two guards who were guarding Sif's tent. Fine suddenly let out a sharp shriek. Fifteen seconds later. These people all covered their heads in pain. Then, they knelt on the ground one after another. At the same time. Flagellella dot like threads began to emerge from their skin. These gray threads floated in the air. 
it emitted a strong evil aura. Insight. The priest Fine used curse. Let's begin, Mr. Rog. Fine gave Matthew an unfriendly look. Anjali. Bring that girl and prepare my carriage. He called out again. Matthew looked around. He noticed that other than the big tent where Sif was imprisoned, there were many other small tents in the valley. These small tents were not used for living. There seems to be something hidden inside. Insight. You have sensed a strong curse aura. This is part of a curse creation. Curse creation. Death Curtain. Matthew was enlightened. He wanted to create a batch of true evil spirits here. Evil spirit was different from the undead that was purely filled with negative energy. Evil spirits that were layered with the elements of the curse were even more terrifying and evil. Are you guys leaving? Matthew took out his staff and looked at Fine. Yes. Before you came, I received a secret message that the Suki family reacted faster than I expected. Unfortunately, I have to postpone the ceremony and abandon this stronghold. Fine explained coldly, their people are on their way here, and I naturally have to prepare some surprises for them. If you don't make a move, then these curse creations will only add a little trouble to the underlings. However, if we could create a real evil spirit in the material world, not only would the spirit be able to make the Suki family suffer a huge loss, you might even be able to please his lord. Mr. Rog, out of politeness and respect, I've already told you everything that I shouldn't have said. Now, please don't disappoint me, as he spoke, his right hand gripped the sword. His left hand was holding a spellbook with an evil wolf head engraved on it. I understand. Matthew smiled lightly and raised his withered wooden staff. A low incantation sounded. Fine retreated to what he thought was a safe distance. He looked at Matthew warily. Until that moment, a strong sense of danger surged into his heart. I forgot to tell you that although I am a necromancer, I am actually a good person. Matthew smiled. In addition, I already have a bone dragon. As soon as he finished speaking, the soundless roar took away all the sounds in the valley. In the distorted air, a gigantic creature covered in bones descended from the sky. Fine and Angeli tried to escape. Unfortunately, they could not do it. A domineering aura spread out like a stone thrown into a calm pond. Your summoned creature has used the ability, Draconic Prestige. Evil Priest Fine and Evil Warrior Angeli were stunned, weakened, and scared. Duration 12 Seconds Chapter 13 Three legendary elements you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. A level 15 bone dragon could cause immense damage to most enemies. The main reason was the draconic might that it had mastered. The draconic might of the bone dragon was considered relatively weak among the dragon race. However, one had to consider the power of its summoner too. It was easy to produce unexpected effects. Except for a portion of warriors who had refined their strength and a small number of monsters, most people could only be reduced to lambs waiting to be slaughtered in the face of the draconic might. Evil priests were no exception. Puff. Philly's body smashed into the fat man's body. The latter's body, which had been transformed by evil techniques, was tougher than most humans. However, compared to the bone dragon that descended from the sky, he could only melt like a slightly larger piece of tofu. On the other side, Matthew also took out the crossbow he had hidden in his bag. Whoosh! The arrow accurately hit Fine's chest. The latter showed signs of breaking free from the influence of the draconic might using the pain. Unfortunately, Matthew would not give him a chance. He willed Philly his order. Philly tactfully followed suit. Fine had just covered his chest with the crossbow and staggered two steps when he was smashed into meat paste by the four dot toad bone claw. Mission Log You have killed the priest, Fine, and successfully eliminated the potential threat of the oak forest. You have obtained the spell, Rapid Growth, the entrance ticket to the Moonlight Society. Warning 
you have killed evil priest fine. You have gained the hatred of the evil spirit overlord Omodochi. Omodochi's hatred plus ten, evil spirit overlord. Matthew frowned slightly. He had thought that Fine's master was, at most, a great evil spirit. He didn't expect that it was actually in existence at the overlord level. However, he did not panic. The stronger the evil spirit, the harder it would be for it to use its power in the material world. As long as he didn't go to the lower planes to court death, this amount of hatred points shouldn't have much of an impact. SSSSSSS Just as Matthew endured nausea and searched the corpse among the mixture of blood and meat paste, a strange voice came from the valley. It was the bandits. There was a hint of pity in Matthew's eyes. The curse has entered their bodies. There's no hope. He knew very little about the curse. But at this moment, these bandits and exiles had already turned into monsters with long green hair and four limbs touching the ground under Fine's curse. Their spines were bent and twisted like mollusks. Their facial features had long cracked. Under the green flagella were countless fine flesh seams and purplish dot red blood tumors. Hiss hiss hiss, they began to attack each other unconsciously. These curse creations were not true evil spirits. After losing their creator, fine, they were only left with their most primitive instincts. They tore each other's bodies apart. Very quickly. The valley was filled with an intense stench. Kill them all. Matthew ordered decisively. Filey did not hesitate. It whizzed over like a bulldozer. Just one round trip. The number of curse creations in the valley had decreased by half. As expected of the strongest summoned creature. My three years of planting trees were not in vain. Matthew nodded in satisfaction. He swept through the valley. After confirming that there was nothing missing. Only then did he walk into the big tent. Sif was still unconscious. Matthew did a quick check to make sure that she wasn't affected by the curse before he heaved a sigh of relief. Sif was a very lovable child. Born in a noble family, she did not put on airs like a young lady. Instead, she was keen on fighting for justice. The residents of Rolling Stone Town liked her very much. Matthew naturally hoped that she would be safe. He did not remove the blanket. Instead, he carried Sif and walked out. In the valley. Filey was having a great time playing. It was like a small mountain, rampaging back and forth. Most of the curse creations had been killed by it. Only a few at the edge were still running around like headless flies. Matthew could tell that Filey was deliberately keeping these crafty creatures to play with. He was just about to remind Filey to stop playing. However, at this moment, an intense warning suddenly shot through his heart. Matthew was shocked. He had no idea no when it started. The mist that had been lingering at the top of the barren mountain slowly pressed down. On the upper level of the valley, the mountain fog continued to descend. It was about to swallow the entire valley. Let's go. Matthew roared. Then, he hugged Sif and jumped onto Filey's head. The bone dragon let out a low cry in unease. It seemed to have sensed the strangeness of the mountain fog. Its huge body started moving. It rushed straight towards the mountain path. Avoid the fog. When they were about to reach the entrance of the valley, Matthew saw the fog coming from the side of the mountain road. What was even more terrifying was. In the fog, he saw a silhouette with disheveled hair. Hurry up and leave. Matthew's heart was beating very fast. However, the other side was a cliff. Can you fly? The mountain fog was about to engulf them. Matthew asked anxiously. Filey did not reply. It spread its featherless and fleshless wings. Then, it leaped toward the cliff. Whoosh! The strong wind mercilessly pierced through the bone wings on both sides. Filey's heavy body sank down violently. Matthew hugged Sif tightly with one hand. 
His other hand grabbed onto Philey's bones tightly. Woo! Philey let out a hurried wail. Its body fell faster and faster. They were about to land at the foot of the mountain. At this critical moment, the bone dragon's soul fire suddenly emitted a burst of stimulating light. The faint wail faded away in an instant. In the next second, Philey's body seemed to have become many times lighter. Its falling posture was suddenly adjusted to a gliding posture. Due to being forced to jump off a cliff, your summoned creature, Philey, has awakened its potential and mastered the dragon, language spell, advanced feather fall, dot. Good job. Matthew patted the skeletal dragon's head hard. Then, he turned around to take a look, still in shock. The mountain fog had already shrouded the valley entrance. However, it finally stopped decreasing. That damned evil priest didn't tell the truth. He must know something about the mountain fog around the ghost castle. No wonder he tried to run away. Matthew broke out in a cold sweat. Fortunately, Fine did not expect that Matthew only took a second to destroy them. If I was delayed for another one or two minutes. Matthew didn't dare to think further. This world was too terrifying. The first time he took the initiative to go out on an adventure, he almost suffered a big loss. As expected. It was safer to plant trees at home. He slowly came to his senses. Matthew looked down at the vast land under the moonlight. The darkness in all directions receded like the tide. The chilly night wind blew against his face. This feeling was not bad. Matthew straightened his back. Let's go home. Philey also let out a low cry. Then, it whistled down the mountain. At the foot of the mountain. The Suki family lord was bidding farewell to the giant eagle. I'm sorry, but I can only send you here. The giant eagle said in a deep voice, My intuition tells me that there is a terrifying evil growing on this mountain. I can't just sit by and do nothing. I also lack the courage to fight against it, so I can only take my leave. You have to be careful and don't get too close to that castle. The Suki family lord nodded. I understand. The location that he divined is in the valley on the west side, which is quite a distance from the ghost castle. The giant eagle folded its wings. So, you deliberately made a big fuss to confuse the insider. The lord laughed silently. Of course. To be able to take Sif away from Zeller's eyes, there must be someone on our side working for the enemy. The giant eagle sighed, the human world is indeed complicated. I hope your courage and wisdom will lead to a good outcome. The lord patted the back of the giant eagle. Then, he pulled out a silver greatsword. Those bugs who only dare to hide in the corner and scheme may have forgotten that I, Rigor Suki, was also a warrior who had fought alone in purgatory. I swore seventeen years ago that no one could take Sif away from me, I will never let that happen again. As he spoke, he raised his sword and strode up the mountain. However, he had only taken a few steps when a huge shadow came crashing down from the sky. Whoosh! A strange shadow flew over his head. Riagar was so shocked by draconic might that he could not move. Bang! The giant sword landed on the ground. It almost smashed through Riagar's boots. A few seconds later, Riagar, who had barely recovered his mobility, looked over in horror. On the back of the skeleton beast, he saw a figure standing proudly. More importantly, he vaguely saw that the person was carrying someone in his arms. Sif. Riagar shouted at the top of his lungs. It couldn't be wrong. That feeling couldn't be wrong. The nightmare from seventeen years ago resurfaced in front of him. He chased after the bone dragon for some distance in a mixture of shock and anger. But very quickly. The black shadow disappeared into the night. There seemed to be someone down there just now. What was he shouting? Philey flew too fast. Matthew didn't see or hear clearly. At this moment, 
he was still immersed in the joy of riding a dragon and flying. Under the support of the high dot level feather fall, Riagar glided out for more than 80 miles before stopping in front of a hill. Matthew had wanted to dot summon Riagar before sending Sif home. But at this moment, a fire suddenly lit up behind the hill. Before Matthew could take any action, the flames had already rushed in front of him. It was a group of people carrying torches and hurrying along. SSSSSSS. Philly let out a low roar. Draconic might. The sudden encounter had caught them off guard. All of them were stunned to the spot. Matthew also saw the panicked faces of the people. Don't move. He scolded in a low voice. He stopped Philly's aggression. After a long time. Only then did the team recover from their shock. Clang. 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 They drew their swords and retreated. It's a bone dragon. Oh no. Didn't you say that they were just bandits? Amidst the uneasy whispers of the people, a calm and cold voice came from the back of the bone dragon. Captain Blake, we meet again. Please follow me. In the crowd. Blake was stunned. He opened his mouth in disbelief. Please follow me. Under the illumination of the torch. Everyone watched nervously as the figure walked down from the skeletal dragon's back. He faced the crowd with his side profile. Therefore, they could only see a blurry appearance. However, the most important thing was. In his arms was a sleeping woman. It's the young miss. Someone exclaimed. Wait. Blake, who had regained his senses, stopped the others in time. Everyone, retreat. He ordered in an unquestionable tone. Everyone looked at him in confusion. After a few seconds. Only then did they retreat a large distance under Blake's urging. Blake walked forward quickly. Matthew. Is it really you, he said in a trembling voice. Who else? Matthew handed the sleeping girl over. She is also my student. Thank God. Blake took Sif and heaved a long sigh of relief. Then, he looked at Matthew and the bone dragon behind him with a complicated gaze. I always thought you were just a lousy necromancer. Uh, do you need me to keep it a secret for you? Matthew smiled. Sure. Then, he reminded them, it's best not to go to the ghost castle. It's too dangerous there. I'm afraid we can only wait for the return of the great wizard Ronan. Blake nodded solemnly. The two of them chatted for a while. Matthew turned around and left. Under everyone's respectful and vigilant gazes. Philly slowly turned its body. The huge skeletal body slowly disappeared into the darkness. Hint. After tonight, the legend of the necromancer riding a bone dragon will spread widely in the form of rumors. Your regional reputation level plus one, Rolling Stone Town, dot. You have satisfied one of the three legendary elements. If you satisfy one more, you can activate the legendary path ahead of time. Three elements, legendary path. Reputation slash domain slash level. Chapter 14. Defensive Psalms and Loose Gloves You are listening at NovelFull.audio. For Matthew, who had always been low.key and pragmatic, it seemed too early to say that he was a legend. However, seeing the same rules as the game in his previous life appearing then still made him feel a little at ease. Legend. It referred to those who were above level 21, had mastered the power of the domain, and were famous. One had to have all three elements. If an adventurer wanted to activate the legendary path, he would have to rely on three aspects. Level, domain, and reputation. Under normal circumstances. Domain elements were the hardest to master, followed by levels, and reputation was the easiest. Especially for those who were good at fraud and self.promotion, obtaining a reputation was very simple. Therefore, Matthew did not have much hope of entering the legendary path early. Meeting Blake here saves me a lot of trouble. 
Otherwise, I would have to send Sif to the Lieges Manor myself. Matthew was very relieved to leave Sif with Blake. This bearded man was not only a reliable captain of the garrison, but he was also Sif's cousin by blood. What was even rarer was that. Blake had actually taken the initiative to offer to keep his power a secret for him. I wonder how he will tell the others and report to his uncle, the Suki family lord. The return journey was very brisk. After a while. The crude walls at the edge of Rolling Stone Town could be seen vaguely. Matthew waved at the bone dragon behind him. Let's go back. Phyles was from a negative energy plane. Although they had signed a contract, Matthew still needed a lot of mana to summon him to the prime material plane. With his mere level 0.8 mana, it was already very difficult for him to hold on until now. If it wasn't for Matthew's intention to test out his limit, he might have sent it back a long time ago. Finally, The bone dragon soul flame swayed, revealing an obvious reluctance. Go, you did great tonight. Keep up this performance, and you might get a reward in the future. Matthew skillfully consoled the creature. Thanks to your encouragement, the loyalty of Philae, Bone Dragon, has increased to 93. The grey reversed summoning array lit up. Philae shook its tail, and its huge body suddenly disappeared, leaving behind only a few pieces of bone powder on the ground. Matthew smiled. This Bone Dragon is much more useful than I thought. However, in the next second. Necromancy Contract the official summoning has ended. Your summoned creature, Philae, has gone all out for tonight's battle. However, during this period, it consumed a large amount of energy, which affected its survival in the negative energy plane. Philae requests the reward for this summoning. Five soul crystals. Do you want to pay? Option 1. Pay at the original price, Philae's loyalty will increase, and it will be willing to share an ability exclusive to it with you, option 2. Bargaining, Philae's loyalty remains unchanged, but it may not be so obedient the next time it is summoned. Option 3. Refuse to pay, Philae's loyalty drops, 5 soul crystals. Matthew revealed a look of disbelief. Peggy's salary for two months is only one soul crystal. Can the Bone Dragon be worth 300 days of Peggy's service in one night? His heart began to twitch. Soul Crystals It was a derivative produced by necromancers during meditation. This thing was extremely precious. For high-dot-level undead creatures, soul crystals were necessary for their advancement. Many intelligent undead creatures were willing to sign contracts with necromancers because they wanted a stable way to obtain soul crystals. Peggy was an example. In addition, soul crystals were also essential for crafting magic items, casting forbidden necromancy spells, and setting up undying rituals. It could be said to have a wide range of uses however, necromancers were not very efficient at producing soul crystals. Take Matthew as an example. Even if he meditated for six hours every day, he could only obtain three to five soul crystals a month. For two and a half years, Matthew had only accumulated more than twenty soul crystals. This was not because he had slacked off in meditation. It was just that the exhaustion was indeed not small. Otherwise, he wouldn't be thinking about how to pay Peggy Lesser every day. I didn't expect to meet a cute scammer. Matthew shook his head in his heart. This bone dragon could no longer be summoned in the future. He couldn't afford it. He hesitated. Matthew still chose to pay the original price. There was no other way. Philae was now his trump card. Loyalty was hard to come by, and he was not willing to lose a lot for a little. Undead contract. You have paid five soul crystals. Philae is extremely grateful. His loyalty towards you has increased to 96. Philae has shared its ability, Blind Sense. Blind Sense, weakened. You can perceive your surroundings without using your normal sight, hearing, smell, and other visual organs. Any small fluctuation will be difficult to escape your perception. 
You can use this ability to detect invisible units and hidden creatures, except spirits. Range 30 feet, this ability was surprisingly good. It was perfect for detecting invisible units. Matthew's heartache was slightly alleviated. I'll just treat it as buying an ability with the five soul crystals. Later in the night. At home. Matthew, who had taken a short break, perked up again and began to take out the spoils of war from his magical bag. The evil wizard's camp actually had quite a lot of resources. Unfortunately, the storage space of the magical bag was very limited. Bringing back so much was already the result of Matthew's best efforts. Most of the spoils of war came from looting Fine. Compared to Heiss, the arsonist, Fine did not have much money on him, only a hundred gold coins and a few silver coins. Perhaps most of his money had been spent on buying prisoners and supplies. However, in terms of items, Fine was very rich. Defensive Psalm, Spell Book, Description When you hold this book, you can use it as a medium to support your spell casting. You can also use it as a charging support to guide your spell casting. Casting Medium Plus 20% casting speed, protection domain spell effect increased, pre.charge. You can choose three spells from the following list to cast quickly every day. After all three spells are used up, it will take at least 24 hours to recharge. Spell List Mystic Lock, Spell Unlock, Rune of Guard, Protection from Good and Evil, Magic Emblem, Morden Canaan's Private Chamber. Matthew found the defensive psalm on Fine's corpse. Fortunately, it was not destroyed by the skeletal dragon's claws. Gently wiping it, it glowed with a new luster. The book was only the size of a palm and was bound in leather, reinforced with steel and silver. There was a steel lock on the side of the book, and it could only be opened with a key. Unfortunately, Matthew did not find the key. However, he was not discouraged. The steel lock that came with the defensive psalm was not a magic lock, which meant that there was no need to use a spell to open it. If that was the case, he could turn to thieves. I remember that there was a slightly famous locksmith in Bai Yen City. Many people said that he was a retired high dot level thief. Matthew thought, unfortunately, I've never heard of anyone in Rolling Stone Town who's good at picking locks. The defensive psalm was a very good magic tool, or rather, the defensive spells recorded in it were precious to Matthew. As long as he could find someone to unlock it. It was the perfect replacement for his staff. Blood Essence Bottle When the bottle is filled with dark red blood essence, you can quickly recover your HP by drinking it. Description 1. Every 10 milliliters of blood essence can restore 5. 6 HP 2. You can slowly refine the blood essence fluid by injecting blood into the bottle. 3. The ratio of blood, normal animal or human, to blood essence fluid is 10.1. Current blood source fluid. 125-150 ml, it was shaped like an ink bottle the size of a baby's fist, but it was filled with dark red liquid. Matthew could feel a faint life force from it, and there was also a faint evil aura. Its origins were probably related to the blood race. Putting aside his prejudice, the blood essence bottle was a small top dot grade item. A full bottle could recover 18 HP in a second, which meant that it could instantly restore an intermediate warrior from a near-dot-death state to about half HP. This was a treasure that could save a life at a critical moment. Matthew solemnly placed it in the first compartment of his magical bag in case he needed it in the future. As for the blood. Just buy it. It was normal for a necromancer to buy some blood for research, right? Among the remaining items, there was a charged staff that could release arcane missiles five times after charging. There was an extremely precious, realm heart stone. If it were sold in Bai Yen City, the price would not be lower than 400 gold coins. This was the core material used to construct the inter-dot-plane array. There was also a one-dot-handed axe with plus one enchantment that could greatly increase the efficiency of logging. Finally, there was a magical glove. 
Loose Gloves, Level 2 Rare Item, Description When you wear this glove and shake hands with the target, the target's guard will be greatly reduced. Remark If you wear this glove for a long time, your wariness towards others will also be greatly reduced. Chapter 15 Battle Concept and Gossip You are listening at NovelFull.audio The Loose Gloves was a very interesting strange item. It couldn't directly provide combat power. However, if it was used properly, the value of this glove might even exceed the sum of the other items. The negative side effects were also within an acceptable range. When he didn't need it, he would just throw it in a corner. He sorted out the spoils of war. While Matthew was impressed by Fine's wealth, he also reminded himself, the man didn't even have the chance to use so many of his tools. It can be seen that whenever you fight with others, no matter how well prepared you are, there is a risk of sudden death. Matthew was a risk-averse person, and he was slightly tired of fighting. At least for now, he was willing to avoid most of the battles that could be avoided. If it weren't for the fact that the arsonist and the evil priest were threatening his development resources and he had the bone dragon, he wouldn't have taken the initiative to attack. But he also knew that avoiding battle would not solve all problems. Therefore, he had no choice. How to protect himself in future battles became the most important thing. No matter what kind of battle it is, the core principle must be to stay alive. Only when you are alive can you deal damage. From another point of view, as long as one is alive, even if one is on the verge of death, there is still hope for one to fight with all of one's might and survive. He recalled the two battles tonight. Matthew seriously summarized his experience. The first combat concept he formulated for himself was, survival first. As for how to apply this concept in practice, many details were involved. Matthew focused deeply on the concept of, beware of sudden death. Any profession with weak health had the risk of dying. This was because this world was filled with all kinds of strange ways to kill people instantly. Master Ronan had once given Matthew a book called, The Death of a Mage. The book recorded the sudden deaths of 99 famous mages in history. The last page of the book read, If you still feel that the author is making a mountain out of a molehill, then you are likely to be the 100th mage who will pay the price of his life for his arrogance. Perhaps he was influenced by the book. Ronan held the series of spells of Garcia's armor in high esteem. However, Matthew felt that the magic armor was useful, but it was too one-dot-sided. Combined with his gaming experience from his previous life, he set the three key attributes to highlight in his mind. Toughness, immunity, will, toughness was the fundamental attribute that resisted most negative statuses and control methods. The benefits of high toughness were incredible. If Fine was not an evil priest but a sword master, Philae's draconic might might not be so effective. Even if the bone dragon was still a level higher and Matthew's side would definitely win, the battle would definitely not be so smooth. This was the most direct manifestation of the value of toughness. If a thief tries to sneak near me, I can use blind sense to counter invisibility. However, if the other party also has a method similar to the dragon's might, I'm afraid I can only sit and wait for death. When he thought of this situation, Matthew felt a little worried. Immunity was a key attribute to resist parasitic microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, and voodoo curses. Willpower was more useful against fear counterchecks. According to Matthew's current growth pattern, he did not have to worry too much about his willpower for the time being. The necromancer's meditation would naturally increase his willpower slowly. Immunity was too unpopular, and he was usually the one who used abilities like Rotten Spore to trick others. As long as he was careful, he would not fail miserably. Therefore, he only needed to focus on toughness. Training one's physique could only go so far. Perhaps the druid class has a way to increase their toughness. If it really doesn't work, I can find a shape-shifting target with high toughness. 
I remember that there are also some low dot level passive spells that can slightly increase toughness. After a long time, Matthew finally pulled himself out of his self dot reflection. He opened the mission panel. He had already mastered the spell, Rapid Growth. With his current mana, he could use it about 10 times a day. This would definitely be of great help to the planting of trees. The other reward was a little confusing. Entrance Ticket to the Moonlight Society, Consumable, Description With this ticket, you can enter the sub-dot plane where the Moonlight Society is located with the help of a nature soul in the wilderness or forest on a full moon night. Matthew knew that the Moonlight Society was similar to the Druid School of Magic. But was it really useful for him? Even if a certain nature soul was willing to help him enter the Moonlight Society, would he, a necromancer, really be accepted? Why don't I just give it a try? Perhaps it could work. He didn't have much hope. At the bottom of the mission panel, the Taiji symbol underwent a significant change. The gray energy on the left side increased by a large margin and jumped to about three dot quarters of its original size. The green energy on the right increased just a little bit more. According to Matthew's previous experience, after he planted four or five trees, the gap would be filled. He was looking forward to the changes after the energy bar was full. The next day, Matthew woke up early and went to the oak forest to work. However, after half a day, he had planted a few trees, and the energy had also increased to the maximum. However, the expected change did not come. This made Matthew think in disappointment, do I need other conditions to trigger it, or do I just need more time? He did not hesitate for too long. After all, planting trees was his job. He was already very satisfied with the 10 points of XP he could get from each oak tree. In the afternoon, Matthew went to Seaver Public School and the Public Security Bureau. For the former, he went to the principal's office to ask for leave, while for the latter, he went to Blake to explain the situation at the farm to him. The matter of taking leave went smoothly. Matthew had connections, to begin with. Not only did the principal agree quickly, but he also asked him about his well-being. As for Blake, at least from the reactions of the others, he had done a good job of keeping it a secret. The people from the Public Security Bureau greeted Matthew as usual. It seemed that they did not associate Matthew with the necromancer from last night. The two of them communicated closely in the morgue for a long time. You don't know how chaotic the situation was yesterday. I tried my best to appease my team members and sent someone to inform the other team that they could return to the city. In the end, as soon as I arrived at the town, I was told that the Lord had disappeared. It's very likely that he went to find the kidnappers alone. At that time, all of us were stunned. I hurriedly handed Sif over to the people from the Lieges mansion and prepared to lead the team to the ghost castle again. After walking for a few miles, the feudal lord actually returned by himself. Later on, I found out that Mr. Zeller had a way to contact the lord. After knowing that Sif was fine, he came back. However, I still brought some people to take a look at the barren mountains in the middle of the night. The environment there is very scary. The fog on the castle sinks to the mountainside. I don't know where the bandits set up their camp. Blake rubbed his dark circles and complained softly. Matthew smiled and met Blake's curious gaze. He said casually, their camp is halfway up the mountain in the valley. The kidnappers died on the spot before the fog sank. Blake was instantly dumbfounded. You're too amazing. Matthew shook his head. He chatted with Blake for a while before leaving the security office. On the way home, Matthew's thoughts were still heavy. It seemed that the incident last night had come to an end. However, there were still many doubts and possibilities. First, the order of calamity. From the contents of the letter, it seemed that Fine was just a shepherd, and his influence was limited to Rolling Stone Town and the surrounding cities. Although he had destroyed the entire evil priest camp in one go, it was hard to guarantee that the others from the Order of Calamity would not return. 
Secondly, there was a high chance that the Suki family had spies from the Order of Calamity. According to Blake, Sif was kidnapped when she went to the countryside to play. The route she took was very secretive, and no one knew except those close to her. If this spy were not found out, they would always be a hidden danger. Fine also mentioned the uniqueness of Sif's bloodline. This made Matthew curious and uneasy. Third, Fine had mentioned in the letter that, the Archmage Ronan was trapped in the astral world. At first, Matthew didn't care. He thought it was nonsense. However, he had just heard from Blake that Ronan had not appeared for more than a year. Not only in Rolling Stone Town, but even Jewel Bay, where he was stationed, had been in a commotion recently. There were several major events that had happened, but Ronan had not appeared. This was inevitably worrying. If this information were true, if that were the case, the days ahead in Rolling Stone Town would not be peaceful. The fourth was about the ghost castle. The soul of the merchant who had been intercepted and killed had mentioned that he had died at the hands of a tall man with disheveled hair. Neither Fine nor Angeli fitted the description. Last night, Matthew saw a figure with disheveled hair as the fog descended. This meant that the death of the merchant was related to the fog in the ghost castle. However, his corpse was found by the farmer on the road not too close to the ghost castle. This was very intriguing. So last night, was it Fine's curse creation that stimulated the creation of the fog? Or was it caused by someone else? Is it because Great Wizard Ronan is trapped in the astral plane that the evil creatures in the ghost castle are about to make a move? The more Matthew thought about it, the more his head hurt. Until dinner time. His thoughts were restless. Tonight's dinner was tomato cream soup, black pepper steak, and cloves egg tart. Peggy's cooking was still superb. However, Matthew had a poor appetite. What's wrong? My dear Matthew, are you finally in your lovey.dovey state? Tell me, which girl is it that makes you so hungry? It can't be Sif, right? She's your student. Matthew rolled his eyes. I'm just thinking about the problem. Peggy said seriously, don't think about the problem while eating. This is basic respect for food. People will often take things for granted. Only someone like me who has died once knows how wonderful and luxurious it is to be able to eat like a living person. Matthew was stunned for a moment and said apologetically, You're right, Peggy. He threw away those thoughts and began to enjoy his dinner. Peggy supported her bony chin with both hands. That's more like it, Matthew. By the way, let me tell you some gossip. I heard it secretly a while ago. This time, it was Matthew's turn to lecture Peggy. Peggy, how many times have I told you not to run around at night just because you have stealth skills? This is very impolite. If you were caught, it would not only be awkward, but it would also be scary. Peggy shrugged. Then do you want to hear the gossip or not? Matthew scooped up a large spoonful of thick soup. Before the sweet spoon could reach his mouth, his mouth could not help but salivate. Ding. He mumbled. Do you know why the Suki family lord hates necromancers? Peggy said mysteriously, because his wife ran off with a necromancer. Dot. Chapter 16. Domain. Oak Tree You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio This was really explosive news. Matthew quickly put down the spoon, his eyes shining. No wonder I've never heard of the Lord's wife. Are there any more details? Peggy shrugged. That's all I heard. At that time, the adulterous couple couldn't wait to get into it after they finished talking. I thought they would continue talking after that, so I hid under their bedroom window until dawn. But I still got nothing. Matthew scooped another spoonful of soup for himself. What a pity. Immediately after, he reminded her solemnly, next time, don't stay outside until dawn. It's very dangerous. Your stealth skills aren't good enough to come and go in daylight. Peggy nodded and said, you're right. I was almost seen by someone that day. 
Matthew quickly asked, what happened after that? Peggy said happily, fortunately, the male owner of the house came back at dawn. The house immediately became noisy, and everyone was distracted. I took the opportunity to run out. Male owner. Matthew was shocked. So you were eavesdropping on a couple having an affair. Peggy crossed her arms. Otherwise, why would I call them an adulterous couple? Matthew coughed. Which family is it? Peggy looked at him suspiciously. What, you want to have an affair with the lady too? Puff. Matthew almost spat the soup on her face. No, I was just curious. He denied it. Peggy crossed her legs. It's 27, White Narcissus Street in the Craftsman's District. The owner of the house is called Bryce. He's a hard-working shoemaker with a good reputation. The female owner is called Jenny. She was once a maid of the Lord's Manor and served the former Lord's wife. Jenny isn't pretty, but she has a smoking bod. Even I have the urge to touch her bones by looking at her. As for the adulterer that night, based on his voice, I could tell that he was a coachman of the Suki family lord. His name should be Dagon. That night. Do you mean this has happened on other nights? Matthew wiped his mouth with a napkin and inadvertently displayed the sensitivity of a druid. Of course, Jenny is famous in the craftsman's area for not rejecting anyone. Her lovers can't be counted on two hands. Peggy's legs were raised higher and higher. But if you want to know, I can also list the names of Jenny's lovers. Thank you, but there's no need, Nav O.M. Matthew rejected her. Peggy, it seems that even if you change your profession to intelligence management, you will also be very good at it. Peggy was instantly overjoyed. Matthew, have you finally discovered my excellence? Then when will you give me a raise? I've already used up the soul crystals from last month. Matthew stood up skillfully and inadvertently displayed the indifference of a necromancer. Next time. Damn necromancers. In the dining room. The towering skeleton's roar did not calm down for a long time. The next morning. Matthew deliberately went to the security office again. He sorted out his guesses from last night on a piece of paper and handed it to Blake along with the secret letter. The latter's expression became much more solemn after reading it. When they left the security office, Matthew noticed that a few members of the garrison team were yawning as if they had just returned from a patrol. In the past, the security office had almost no night shifts. It seems that the Lord has strengthened the security around the town. I wonder if the roads, trading stations, and sentry posts at the border have received the same level of attention. Matthew did not think too much about it. He had only done what he could. He would leave the rest to the Suki family lord. At noon. The breeze was warm. Matthew stood on the hillside on the southwest side of the oak forest to choose the site for his next work. Master Ronan's land had been completely covered by the oak forest. If Matthew wanted to expand the planting area, he would have to step into other people's land. He looked into the distance. The map of the surroundings of the oak forest appeared in his mind. To the southwest was Rolling Stone Town, which did not have much room for expansion. In the southeast, there were some farms of various sizes. Most of the crops in Rolling Stone Town grew here. Most of the land here had been bought by the farmers, so there was not much space for oak trees to grow. To the northeast was a barren land without an owner, but there was the scar of the dead obstructing it. Further away were the barren mountains and the ghost castle, which looked ominous no matter how one looked at it. Only the land in the northwest was the most suitable. However, that was the private land of the Suki family lord. If Matthew wanted to plant trees on it, he would at least have to seek the approval of the city hall. The Lord wouldn't reject me just because of his prejudice, would he? Matthew was a little troubled. A long time ago, Master Ronan had reminded him that the Suki family Lord was a good person, but he hated necromancers. Yesterday, he got the reason from Peggy. He could understand the hatred of the Lord. However, 
he did not want to hang the fact that he had saved Sif's life over the Lord in exchange for the right to plant trees on his land. In short, it was a pain in the ass. If worse comes to worst, I'll challenge the scar of the dead. I'll plant a large oak forest along the edge and wrap the scar of the dead in it. Matthew encouraged himself. He was tired of choosing the location. He leaned against an oak tree to rest. The afternoon sun shone brightly. It made one feel sleepy. Matthew yawned and was about to take a nap. Suddenly. A violent tremor around him woke him up from his dazed state. What is happening? Matthew looked around blankly. He saw that the oak trees beside him were growing at an unbelievable speed. They had grown from three to four meters to three to four hundred meters before his eyes. The endless shade of the trees covered everything. Matthew stood up from the ground. He looked up at the oak forest. The oak forest was also sizing him up. Matthew could hear their whispers. Ah, how amazing. A necromancer. I hate necromancers, but I don't hate him. Maybe there are some strange necromancers, or maybe this is an anomaly. We should give him a chance to take the test. Matthew walked quietly in the dark forest. A deer that was emitting pure white light ran past him. Two woodpeckers were playing with each other overhead. A frog wearing a gentleman's hat greeted him by the pond he passed by. In the end, he came to a waterfall in the depths of the forest. The waterfall went down 10,000 feet. A large number of green light spots flowed up the waterfall. This light spot. Matthew's heart skipped a beat. In the next moment, an eagle dot faced man appeared beside him. The latter said in a low voice, You are not qualified to explore this place yet. After saying this, the scene around Matthew seemed to be rewinding. Whoosh! The green phenomenon disappeared without a trace. Matthew sat under the oak tree in a daze. At the bottom of the mission panel, the green light on the right side of the Taiji symbol had been completely consumed. Hint. You have successfully stepped into the sub-domain of nature, oak tree, and have completed a short stay in it. As a reward for stepping into the field, you can choose one of the following three abilities. 1. Summon Treant, in a forest that is over 500 years old, you can recruit several Treant companions. 2. Woodpecker Contract, you will obtain shape-shifting form. Woodpecker, and gain three times the flying speed. 3. Natural Immunity, your toughness plus 2. Matthew's eyes lit up. What was there to hesitate about? He directly chose three. At that moment, Matthew vaguely saw a green light enter his body. He could feel that his physique had become stronger. One point of toughness can provide a 20% increase in effect. My immunity in related areas is now 44% stronger than before. Matthew was in a good mood. Although it could not be compared to sword masters and monks, who had more than 10 points of toughness, Matthew was rather stronger already. At least he had taken the first step of stopping a sudden death. Detected that you have fulfilled two of the three legendary elements, reputation slash domain. You have unlocked the legendary path ahead of time. Legendary path, germinal, keywords. Undying and natural, domain status. One-sixth, revelation one. Weak body, low mana, poor mind, ignorant soul. The path of legend has actually been opened in you. This may be the mercy of the heavens or, more likely, an error in the laws. You should not have extravagant hopes. Returning to the mediocre path is your only way to save yourself. Revelation 2. Life and death, destruction and rebirth don't always seem to conflict. You found an unprecedented path. It doesn't matter if it's muddy or thorny. You should keep at it. Please choose a revelation as the motto of your legendary path. Different revelations mean different legendary paths and different follow dot up rewards, Matthew immediately took down, Revelation 2. Next. 
As long as he could continue to explore this path, he would carve out his own legend. After he mastered some legendary abilities, his power would also be stronger than an ordinary necromancer. At this point, Matthew finally understood the meaning of the Tai Chi symbol. It was the embodiment of Matthew's legendary path. The general direction had been decided. His path was marked by the two keywords, undying, and natural. If the green lights will open the oak domain when full, what about the gray lights? Matthew was looking forward to it. However, at this time, another piece of news flashed before his eyes. You have completed the enlightenment of the oak tree's domain. Current situation of the realm is your first entry to the domain. You have received a permanent status, longevity, description. Your lifespan plus 100 years, you have obtained a temporary status, no pain, no gain. Description During the duration of the status, you will receive one strengthening experience point for every oak tree you plant. Every 10 experience points can be used to strengthen your summon skeleton soldier once. Duration Limit 30 Days Chapter 17 Late Night Visitor You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Is This the Power of the Heart of Nature? Matthew was overjoyed. A short lifespan had always been the greatest pain for humans in their search for the truth. Many wizards would do anything to extend their lifespan. Liches were one of the products of humans' pursuit of immortality. However, if he could extend his lifespan naturally, who would be willing to turn themselves into a cold lich? Matthew had a premonition. As he continued to explore the domain of the oak tree, there was still a lot of room for him to extend his lifespan. Compared to the one-dot-time buff of longevity, the effect of no pain, no gain stimulated the fire of labor in Matthew's heart. If I plant ten trees, I can strengthen them by plus one. If I plant one thousand trees in one go, I can strengthen the skeleton soldiers by plus one hundred. He was completely excited. Although it was a bit of a fantasy to plant one thousand trees in thirty days. However, as long as they were properly planned, two hundred to three hundred trees were still possible. It was currently spring. It was the most suitable season for planting trees. In order to speed up the planting process to the greatest extent, Matthew decided to do both. Tonight, he would write a report to the city hall to apply for planting trees on the land of the Suki family lord. The next morning, he would officially start to plant trees in the direction of the scar of the dead. You planted a sapling. You used rapid growth on the sapling. Planting successful. Your affinity with nature has increased slightly. You have received one strengthening experience point, 10 points accumulated. You have gained 10 XP. Your level cannot be increased, the remaining XP has been accumulated, please level up your profession as soon as possible, the next afternoon. Matthew was resting behind a huge rock. The oak tree that had just been planted was about 40 to 50 meters away. But Matthew couldn't sense any vitality from it. The root cause of this phenomenon was the pitch dot black scar on the other side of the rock. The marker stones near the scar of the dead are said to have been set up by the Suki family lord with his men. They are all in the territory of Rolling Stone Town. They can indeed prevent ordinary people from entering dangerous places by mistake, provided that the scar of the dead does not spread. Matthew wiped his sweat, his eyes very serious. He had been in Rolling Stone Town for less than three years, and the scar of the dead had spread visibly. Three years ago. The edge of the scar of the dead was more than ten meters away from the marker stone. And now, the two were almost touching. It was not hard to imagine what the situation would be like in a few years. This was also the reason why he planted the new oak tree further away. He had to leave enough buffer for the scar of the dead to spread in the next few years. How tiring. Today's tree planting goal had been achieved. However, it was not easy to reclaim land near the scar of the dead. The terrain here was complex, and the land was barren. There were many factors he had to consider. 
The only consolation was that the gold digger basin had a rich underground water system. As long as the oak tree took root, it would not die of thirst. The trees planted today are a little too sparse. They can't form a group effect, and their ability to resist disasters will also decrease. He inspected the areas that he might be able to set foot in tomorrow. Matthew pondered as he walked back. As the oak forest continued to expand, he needed more and more time to go back and forth between his home and the forest. Usually, it was fine. However, right now, he was racing against time to earn as much buff as he could. He was going to ask someone to build a small wooden house in the oak forest. At least this month. He was planning to hide in the forest and not come out. In the evening. It was almost time to get off work, and the city hall was deserted. Only Ms. Liz's unique loud voice came from one of the offices. You want to plant trees on his lordship's private land? Yes. Matthew politely handed over the application. He was a particular person. As for the various official rules and regulations, as long as they were not particularly annoying, he was happy to abide by them. This application was written with reference to the model documents handled by the City Hall in previous years. He was confident that no one could find any fault with the content and format. As expected, after reading it, Liz raised her eyebrows. Beautiful writing. Thank you. Matthew smiled. I'll help you submit the application. Theoretically, there shouldn't be any problems because this land has always been entrusted to our city hall by the Lord. There was once a businessman who wanted to contract that place. He wanted to build a small mine there, but his proposal was ultimately rejected by us. At that time, there were already enough mines around Rolling Stone Town. You weren't here at the time. There was thick smoke everywhere. Liz continued, but guess what? The mines were gone overnight. The bosses of the mines lost all their money, and the businessmen even came to thank us. I remember he gave Mr. Ormond two boxes of cider but only one for me. Matthew listened quietly. He had heard a lot about the mines in Rolling Stone Town. In many versions of the legend, those mines disappeared overnight. Some people said that the Lord of Rolling Stone Town had offended the Or Elves, but Matthew knew that Or Elves did not exist at all. Some said that this was a curse from Purgatory and that Rolling Stone Town, which had lost its mines, would become poor. But in fact, Rolling Stone Town did not decline because of this. The Suki family lord had established two trading posts at the border of his territory, one in the south and one in the north. They took over the trade routes from the southwest and northeast to the hinterland of the human kingdom and the Eversong forest. Business at the trading post boomed, and the economy of Rolling Stone Town also thrived. In recent years, the handicraft industry in the town had developed rapidly, and various small workshops had emerged one after another. There was a faint hint of industrialization. Perhaps it was the Suki family lord's credit, but in Matthew's opinion, the five-dot member committee that had been handling various government affairs all year round had also contributed greatly. Ms. Liz was one of them. About Ms. Liz. Matthew didn't know much. In his impression, this woman was harsh and picky, loved gossip, and had a bad reputation in town. However, she also loved her work and was diligent. This could be seen from the fact that the other officials had already gotten off work, and she was still in the office dealing with documents. The most important thing was. She was Blake's mother, the distant cousin of the Suki family's lord, and Sif's aunt. In a sense, Liz represented the will of the Suki family lord in the five-dot member committee. This was also the reason why Matthew had specially fined her to post his application. An hour later. It was completely dark outside. All right, young man, thank you for listening to me. There aren't many young people as patient as you. Liz lit the candle and continued to deal with the documents. You can return now. I will help you with your application as soon as possible. After the committee has approved it, I will inform you as soon as possible. Matthew nodded and stood up. 
He loosened his muscles and bones, and his body made crackling sounds. By the way, Matthew, I remember that you are also a necromancer. What do you think of the rumors these days? Liz suddenly called out to him, her eyes full of gossip. Matthew pondered and said, You mean the necromancer with the bone dragon? I heard that he almost fought with the town guards. Liz shook her head. The version you heard is wrong. That necromancer seems to be a friend and not an enemy. Not only did he save, well, uh. In short, he did not seem to be a bad person. She seemed to realize that some things could not be said casually. Matthew smiled gently. Necromancer is just a profession. Of course, he's not necessarily a bad person. Liz looked at him with interest. For example, you. A necromancer who likes to plant trees. To be honest, I really think you've been delayed by your need to be an adventurer. Look at you, Matthew, what a handsome young man. Even compared to my Blake, your appearance is not inferior. As long as you agree, I'll be happy to introduce you to a few daughters from good families. Matthew immediately blushed. I did I think I'm far inferior to Blake. Liz was delighted to hear this. Don't say that, Matthew. I think you're much more pleasing to the eye than my brat. That's it. Come to me tomorrow to get the approval. You can plant whatever you want on the land of the Lord. You don't need to get the Lord's approval. Matthew was surprised. Liz waved her hand. It's just an administrative process. The Lord won't really interfere with political affairs. He's busy taking care of his daughter these days. I still have this amount of power. As long as you don't turn that piece of land into a mass grave, you can do anything. Matthew was overjoyed. So he flattered Liz a few more times. The middle-aged lady was laughing so hard that she bent forward and backward. He waited until late at night. After Matthew came out of City Hall, he sent Liz home. Not only did he receive his approval in advance, he even applied for a forestry allowance. This sum of money was about 200 gold coins. It was taken from the Lord's own treasury. This experience gave Matthew a lot of insight. Thousands of words converged into one sentence, Blake's mother is awesome. It was another night. In the basement. Peggy, a cup of coffee. Matthew shouted twice but did not get a response. He could only get up and do it himself. She can't be eavesdropping under some window at this time again, right? The strong aroma of coffee washed away a little sleepiness. Matthew mumbled. His attention returned to the spellbook in front of him. Introduction to the Thunderblast Sword. How to stick it deep. However, he didn't wait long. The copper bell with a thin thread hanging beside his hand buzzed. Someone was ringing the bell outside the fence. A late dot night visitor for me. Matthew frowned. Chapter 18 You have to pay your family you are listening at novel full dot audio. Matthew pushed open the door and looked out. Outside the gate. A petite figure stood there. There was no moon tonight. Matthew could only vaguely see that the other party was wearing a dark red cloak and was looking left and right uneasily. Sif. The mage fire lit up. Matthew walked over and saw a fair little face. It was the girl he had rescued from the evil priest's camp a few days ago. Perhaps it was because she had been running, but Sif's face was red, and her eyes were misty. Shoot Matthew, I snuck out. Sif's voice trembled slightly. Uh, is it convenient for you to let me in? Matthew opened the door. Of course, but isn't it inappropriate for you to do this? He was referring to Sif, who had just been kidnapped. Her safety worried many people in the Legia's residence. If she were discovered sneaking out, it would inevitably cause a big problem. Don't worry. I'm not an insensible rebellious girl. Sif took off the hood of her cloak as she walked inside. I sneaked out after the maids fell asleep. 
There was a mirror image of me in the bedroom to cover for me. Moreover, I won't be away for too long. I already feel very sorry for making everyone worry so much last time. Matthew nodded. He led the girl into the living room and sat down. Do you want coffee or milk? Peggy was not around, so Matthew could only serve her himself. Sif smiled and said, Milk. I can't sleep well if I drink coffee at night. I haven't slept well these days. A moment later. The girl held the steaming milk and blew on it gently. Matthew sat silently in front of her. The atmosphere was a little awkward. Eddie E.T., ha, it's so hot. Sif took a sip of milk and stuck out her tongue. I'm here to thank you, Matthew. Matthew observed the other party without batting an eyelid. Sif put down the milk and said with amusement, Please, don't tell me you think everyone will believe that story Blake made up. At least I know that my savior isn't some big shot from Bai Yen City, but it's you. Matthew thought for a moment and asked, Were you sober at that time? Sif blushed and nodded. I was never unconscious. The evil priest had me smell some kind of power. My consciousness was always clear, but I couldn't control my body. At this point, she let out a long breath, and her face revealed a deep look of fear. To be honest, Matthew, if it weren't for you, I really don't know what would have happened. You saved my life, but I don't know how to thank you. These past few days, they locked me up at home, but I couldn't sleep at all. Every time I closed my eyes, the evil priest's face would appear in front of me. Only when I thought of you would my heart feel a little more at ease. Matthew listened quietly to Sif's confession. Being kidnapped could easily become a person's nightmare. If it were someone with a weak mentality, they would have collapsed long ago. But Sif was obviously different. She only whispered for a while before she put on a youthful smile and said, I really didn't expect you to be so powerful. If the other girls in the school knew about this, I'm afraid that the number of love letters you'll receive during the spring festival will be doubled. But I'm a necromancer, Matthew said calmly. So what if you're a necromancer? Bina is an idiot. Sif said excitedly. She clearly likes you so much, but she was at a loss when she heard that you were once a necromancer. Not every necromancer is a bad guy. Matthew looked at her in surprise. Bina. Sif subconsciously covered her mouth with half a palm and said embarrassedly under Matthew's gaze, Okay, okay, I admit that I encouraged her to confess to you, but what's wrong with that? She likes you a lot. She has a diary at home, and at least 90% of the content is related to you. She even wrote down the color of your socks in class every day. In my opinion, this is what love looks like. Of course, I'd encourage her to show her feelings before she left. I just didn't expect her to care so much about what the world would have thought about you being a necromancer. What a disappointment. Matthew rubbed his temples. He couldn't comment on the views of teenage girls on love. Hence, he could only change the topic. So, the others also know that I was the necromancer. Sif shook her head like a rattle drum. I didn't tell anyone. Everyone else believed Blake's nonsense, including my father. He's a big idiot. However, before she finished speaking. In the corner of the living room, the copper bell strung on the hemp rope rang again. Who would come looking for you in the middle of the night? Sif followed behind Matthew with half a glass of milk. In the next second. Her face turned pale. It's my father. Oh no, Matthew, where can I hide? My lord. What brings you here so late at night? Matthew asked politely from inside the fence. He did not open the door. Firstly, he was not familiar with this lord. Secondly, his daughter was in his house. He was afraid that he would not be able to explain this situation. Is this how you treat your guests? Rigor Suki said angrily. Matthew noticed that he was also wearing a dark red cloak. The material was similar to the one Sif was wearing, but the size was obviously much larger. 
The space behind him was empty, and there were no followers following him. Stop looking, I'm alone. Rieger impatiently urged, let's talk inside. Matthew had no choice but to open the door and lead him into the living room. Coffee or milk, he asked. No need. I won't stay here for too long. Rieger's tone was very stiff. Matthew nodded and naturally sat down opposite him. Listen, Matthew. I hate necromancers the most in my life. But my upbringing doesn't allow me to turn a blind eye to my daughter's savior. Riga gritted his teeth and said, that's why I'm here to thank you. Thank you for saving my daughter. Matthew spread his hands, but, Blake. Who would believe that nonsense he made up? A necromancer from Bai Yen City who happened to be passing by. Coincidentally, they had met once. Even a third dot rate bard could come up with a better story than that. Matthew rubbed his temples and was a little speechless. Seeing Matthew's flustered expression, Rhaegar's mood seemed to improve a little. Don't blame Blake. I watched that child grow up. He has never been a good liar. However, you can rest assured that there are no more than five people in the town who really know the inside story of this matter. Although I don't know why a powerful necromancer like you would hide in my territory, we will keep your secret. Matthew looked straight at Rieger. I'm curious. Even if you can tell that Blake is lying, why are you so sure that it's me? Maybe he really knew some powerful necromancer. Rieger sneered and then said seriously, I saw you the other day. Our Suki family has a certain purgatory bloodline, so we also have some secret abilities. In any case, I can be certain that it is you. Matthew nodded. Actually, he didn't want to keep it a secret. He just wanted to keep a low profile. All right, Matthew, let's cut the crap. You can make a request of me. I'll definitely fulfill it within my ability. Rieger stared at Matthew with an unfriendly gaze. I don't want to owe a necromancer a favor. Matthew thought for a moment and decided to mention that he wanted to plant trees on the land in the northwest. Although Liz had already helped him settle this matter. But Matthew was a very particular person. After all, that piece of land was Rieger's private land. In order to avoid unnecessary disputes, it was better to confirm it with this lord when there was a chance. Just planting trees. Rieger frowned. Matthew looked at him with an open gaze. One or two bodies might be buried there. A look of deep disgust flashed across Rieger's eyes. As expected of an annoying necromancer. But you did save Sif's life. I'll give you that piece of land. From now on, we're even. Matthew was a little surprised. Without waiting for him to speak. Rieger stood up immediately. Remember, necromancer. I don't owe you anything in the future. Also, I want to give you a piece of advice. Stay away from my daughter. After saying that, he glared at Matthew fiercely and then went out by himself. Bang. He slammed the door shut. The footsteps faded away. After a long time. Sif's little head popped out of the kitchen. She looked at Matthew with a worried expression. Oh no, Matthew, are you really going to stay away from me? Matthew looked at her in amusement. He said it on purpose for you to hear. Don't make things difficult for him. Sif looked surprised. So Matthew led her to the window. Outside the fence, illuminated by the mage fire, the middle dot aged man in the dark red cloak was still standing at the door. He's waiting for you. Perhaps he's been secretly protecting you ever since you came back. His eyes were bloodshot. He probably hadn't slept for the past few days. Matthew said gently, he is a good father. Sif's eyes instantly turned red. She pursed her lips and whispered, I know. I always knew. After mom left, he was sad for a long time. I'm sorry, Matthew. He doesn't mean any harm to you. Matthew smiled, indicating that he didn't mind. Sif was silent for a while, 
then waved her little fists in front of her chest. I'll think of a way to help him undo the knot in his heart. I know my father is a good person, but I don't want to alienate you because of this. Matthew, do you understand what I mean? The girl looked up at Matthew. Her eyelashes trembled slightly, and her eyes were bright. Matthew did not speak. At this moment, a voice came from the kitchen. You can try to find yourself a stepmother. People say that only new love can suit the pain from an old love. Sif looked at the skeletal Tauren in surprise. Matthew, is this your summoned creature? Sif whispered. Matthew noticed that there was more curiosity than fear in her eyes. So he introduced, this is Peggy. Yes, she's my family. Peggy was delighted at first. Then, her face darkened. Thank you, Matthew, but I have to remind you that you still have to pay your family for her services. A week later. Deep in the oak forest. In a newly built wooden house. Matthew sat by the wooden bed and looked at his latest work. No pain, no gain. Accumulated 83 strengthening experience points. 8 strengthening opportunities. Please choose the skeleton you want to strengthen. Chapter 19 Skeleton Soldier You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. In the past week, Matthew's life was busy and fulfilling. Planting trees during the day. At night, he would meditate and learn spells. He even found time to find someone to build this small house in the forest. The house was not big, but it was well dot equipped. In addition to the necessary functional areas, the two carpenters also built a small attic and a beautiful fence for him. Matthew sat on the wooden bed. There was a faint fragrance between his nose and mouth. He vaguely felt that the green energy in his natural legendary path had increased slightly. As for the progress of the undying path. It had halted. This might be related to the fact that he had not summoned many undead creatures or killed any recently. However, Matthew was most excited about the strengthening. There's no hurry. I've already endured for so many days. Let's wait for the sky to turn dark. Matthew looked out the window. The faint yellow sunlight was gradually dimming. Even though few people came to this forest, he still maintained the habit of summoning skeletons at night. It wasn't that Matthew was afraid of being disturbed. He simply didn't want to scare the ordinary people in the town. Half an hour later. Matthew walked out of the wooden house. The warm night wind brought the laughter of the oak trees. Matthew opened the cellar lid of the skeleton cellar and woke up the twelve skeleton soldiers one by one. Very quickly. The skeleton soldiers finished assembling. Under the hazy moonlight. Matthew carefully examined the skeletons. He wanted to choose the best one to strengthen. In fact, Matthew had wanted to strengthen Peggy at first. After all, she was at profession level 9, and the two of them had been together for many years, so they had a tacit understanding. However, the problem was that Peggy was a mutant skeleton and did not meet the requirements for this enhancement. Matthew had to pick the best one from this batch of skeleton soldiers with an average level of 3. You. After a 20-minute physical examination, Matthew finally chose the target to strengthen. It was a skeleton soldier that was looking at him in a daze. The reason why Matthew chose him was because he had considered many aspects. The soul fire of this skeleton soldier was more condensed. Although it did not have the most bones, its bones were relatively good. The most important thing was. Matthew realized that this fellow was a little different from the other skeleton soldiers. The other skeleton soldiers would only be in a daze when they were examined by him. But it was different. It had been unconsciously twisting its hips. It was this that aroused Matthew's curiosity. It said that very few undead creatures can inherit some of their abilities from when they were alive. This skeleton soldier might also have a chance to awaken. With this thought in mind, Matthew ordered it to stand out alone. In order to make it easier to order him around in the future, 
he even specially gave him a name. Since it's a skeleton soldier, let's call it soldier from now on. Prompt. Naming successful. Your summoned creature skeleton soldier number 11 has its own name, soldier. Soldier was puzzled by your naming, but he was still grateful for it. Soldier twisted his crotch at you. It's about time. Matthew ordered the other skeletons to go back to the cellar. Then, he glanced at the summoning panel. Name. Soldier, Race. Skeleton, LV3, Attributes. Strength 14 slash Constitution 8 slash Agility 14 slash Intuition 4 slash Intelligence 4 slash Charm 4, Characteristics. Fear Immunity slash Disease Immunity slash Undead Race, Ability. Step Back, High Agility and Strength. Matthew raised his eyebrows. He tried to invest 10 strengthening points into Soldier. Enhancement successful. Soldier's level had increased to level 4, and his overall attributes had received a small increase. Soldier received the enhancement keyword, Beginner Enlightenment. Beginner Enlightenment, White. Your summoned creature has the intelligence of a 5.year.old child and can understand some of your simple commands. Strengthening can upgrade the summoned creature, increase its overall attributes, and impose keywords of different grades on them. Matthew was an experienced gamer. He could tell the general direction of the system at a glance. He strengthened Soldier again. Enhancement successful. Soldier received the keyword, Short Weapon Specialization. Short Weapon Specialization, Purple. Your summoned creature is good at using short weapons. When it uses a short weapon, its attack speed, attack power, and critical hit probability are increased by 30%. Sure. Matthew no longer hesitated and strengthened it with all his might. The next three attempts were all successful. The rewards were two good keywords and a level increase. Weakness Observation, Blue Your summoned creature can identify the enemy's weaknesses before and during battle. Assassin Mode, Blue Your summoned creature has activated the Assassin Mode. Agility plus 2, and learn the assassin's abilities, stealth, and sap, I didn't expect you to become an assassin with some twitches of your hips. Matthew looked at Soldier with interest. He wondered if it was the effect of, beginner's enlightenment. He noticed that Soldier's soul fire had become more solid. There was also a hint of nostalgia and respect in the eyes that looked at him. Hence, Matthew struck while the iron was hot and continued to strengthen it. Enhancement failed. Soldier received the keyword, Bone Loss. Bone Loss, Gray. Your summoned creature's HP is reduced by 10%, would a failed enhancement result in negative keywords? Matthew was deep in thought. This was not unusual. The results of the next two times were normal. One upgrade and a purple keyword. Dirty Trick, Purple, Prerequisite Keyword. Weakness Observation Your summoned creature is good at using underhanded moves including but not limited to crotch attack, sand toss, and return spear. Dirty trick is actually purple grade. Matthew was a little surprised. Soldier looked at him innocently. With its current intelligence, it might not be able to understand the changes in its body, but these keywords would be integrated into its combat instincts. Matthew clicked his tongue in wonder. He walked around Soldier. He noticed that the color of the latter's bones had changed significantly. The gray bones that had occupied most of his body had disappeared, replaced by white and even silver bones. Gray bone, white bone, silver bone, gold, diamond. The classification of skeletons flashed through Matthew's mind. Soldier was now a skeleton assassin. Of course, it couldn't be compared to a golden skeleton with extraordinary talent like Peggy. However, it was not to be underestimated. Enhancement successful. Soldier obtained the legendary keyword, Sword Dancer. Sword Dancer, Gold. Your summoned creature has awakened part of its strength from when it was alive. Assassin mode has been replaced with the rare profession Blade Dancer mode. 
Soldier gained new abilities, Blade Dance, Funeral Dance, and Dark Knight Cloak. A golden legendary keyword. Matthew's eyes immediately lit up. After this enhancement, Soldier's temperament had obviously changed. The bones on his body flickered with a silver light, and almost in an instant, all of them turned silver. White. A pitch. Black curtain appeared behind him. Matthew's heart skipped a beat as he ordered, put it on. Soldier was stunned for a moment. The curtain automatically covered his body. In the next second, Soldier disappeared without a trace. Your summoned soldier has used Dark Knight Cloak. Matthew closed his eyes and activated his blind sense. He could sense that there was an invisible unit near him, but he could not know its exact location. He was clearly right in front of me. Matthew asked Soldier to turn off the Dark Knight Cloak. The invisibility effect of this ability was too shocking. After all, Philly's blind sense was supposed to be the nemesis of invisible units. It seems that I have to be careful in the future. Not all invisible units can be detected by blind sense. But now, the more Matthew looked at Soldier, the more satisfied he was. In time, this guy's strength would definitely not be inferior to Peggy's, and it might even surpass the Bone Dragon. I wonder if there are any higher dot level gold legendary keywords. Matthew subconsciously wanted to strengthen it again. However, he suddenly realized that he had used up all the strengthening opportunities. He smiled bitterly and patted his cheek. Now, he finally understood why the mobile gacha game was so popular in his previous life. Since the Dark Knight cloak wouldn't consume any of Soldier's energy at night, Matthew arranged for him to patrol outside his house in stealth mode. The cabin had just been built, and Matthew still had a lot of arrangements to make. If it were the old Rolling Stone town, it would be fine. Recently, public security had shown signs of deterioration, so he had to be extra careful. Spell traps were a must. When I go to the market to buy seeds tomorrow, I'll also see if there are any trap dot setting scrolls. It's too troublesome to do it myself. Matthew lay on the hard wooden bed and ate a few mouthfuls of bread. He began to miss Peggy's cooking. Why don't I have Soldier guard the next and ask Peggy to come over and accompany me? No, Soldier's intelligence is still too low. He couldn't handle many things as easily as Peggy. Matthew yawned. He forced himself to meditate. For the soul crystals. He could not slack off for a night. Southwest of the oak forest. On the hill. Two figures, one tall and one short, walked over. Boss Dean, it should be nearby. The farm below has been burned to ruins. It must be heist doing. The tall man's face was fierce. This guy is really rude. He clearly promised boss that he would meet you on time. In the end, he ran to such a remote place without saying a word. We can't even find a trace of him. Short Dean stared at the trees ahead. Suddenly. His nose twitched. Heiss is dead. The tall man was stunned. How is that possible? Could it be that the great mage had made a move? Dean's face was gloomy. Impossible. It's a fact that Ronan is trapped in the astral plane. He can't possibly lay his hands on a small fry like Heiss. The tall man thought for a moment and said, Is that a local lord? The Suki family was once glorious. Although the current patriarch is a useless guy, I heard that his wife ran away with a necromancer. Dean shook his head slightly. The two of them silently stepped into the oak forest. Heiss corpse is buried here. Dean looked gloomy. Buried in the woods. Who would do such a wicked thing? The tall man looked around. At this moment. He suddenly pointed into the distance and said, Boss, look. There's a small wooden house over there. Chapter 20 Craftsman Protection Association You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Boss, look. There's a small house over there. As he spoke, 
he was about to walk over. Don't go over there, Mobley. Dean suddenly shouted at the tall man to stop his rash action. Follow me immediately. Dean said as he quickly retreated out of the forest. Mobley didn't understand, but he still followed Dean obediently. They continued until they completely left the forest. Mobley couldn't help but ask, why should we retreat? If it were up to me, we should set fire to this place. I can feel that this place is full of vitality. If this fire is strong enough, we might be able to advance a lot on the path of legend. Dean was also moved. But very quickly. He shook his head. I've told you and the others in the Brotherhood many times. The most important quality of an arsonist is restraint. It is easy to surrender to the burning desire, but we need to restrain it. Look closely at this forest. It's obviously newly cultivated. And that hut. I just sensed the scent of a domain in the forest. This meant that there was at least a powerful druid nearby, and Heiss was probably killed by him. Before I know his level, I don't want to fight a high-dot-level druid in his domain, Mobley scratched the back of his head and said disapprovingly, but I've never heard of any powerful druids in Rolling Stone Town. Dean looked at him. The intelligence needs to be updated. We'll stay outside tonight and enter the city tomorrow to collect intelligence. After making sufficient preparations, we'll formulate a plan and then take action. Do you understand? Mobley said resentfully, All right, all right. You're the boss. I'll listen to you. The two of them went around the oak forest. They gradually disappeared into the night. At the edge of the forest, Matthew's figure quietly appeared. On his shoulder, an oak tree fairy was chattering about something. These two people are not good people, it was very likely that they were Heiss accomplices, members of the Silver Frost Brotherhood. Matthew glanced at the mission panel. The progress of the maintenance mission was not updated. However, he did not let his guard down. In his opinion, the system was not omnipotent. Perhaps only after he had collected enough information would the mission progress be updated. In comparison, he was more willing to trust his intuition. Did you remember what those two looked like? Matthew asked the fairy on his shoulder. The latter revealed a smug expression, then rubbed Matthew's earlobe hard, revealing an extremely enjoyable expression. The next day. Security Bureau. Pa. Two lifelike portraits were placed on Blake's desk. Blake was still eating breakfast. When he saw Matthew, he wiped the bread crumbs off his beard and hurriedly asked, Is there something wrong with these two? Matthew nodded. They might be related to the farm fire. Blake stared at the portrait. I understand. I'll mobilize people to follow them secretly. If there's really something wrong with them, I'll take them down. But today is the first day of the Spring Festival Market. There are many people in the town, so I have to prioritize the safety of the people. Matthew expressed his understanding. He was not worried that Blake would not be a match for the two of them. The captain of the garrison team was already a peak tier 3 warrior at a young age. It would not be difficult for him to fight Heiss alone. Moreover, he had many members with excellent weapons and complete equipment. It was common knowledge that if no magic professions were involved, in a situation where warriors were fighting each other, it would always be an irrefutable fact that the party with more people and better equipment would win. Although Rolling Stone Town was a poor and remote place, it never lacked elite warriors. After all, the Suki family lord was a level 4 warrior himself. The only thing lacking here was spellcasters. These two paintings are not bad. Can you introduce the artist to me? Blake said as he looked at the two portraits. Matthew couldn't help but tease, oak fairies are probably the most picky creatures in the world when it comes to appearance, and their princess has the strictest eye. They prefer handsome young men. As for you, Blake, you look at least forty years old, unless you shave your beard, they might not even want to see you. Blake was instantly displeased. Hey, don't talk nonsense, okay? 
When I went out this morning, my mother even praised me for being very energetic. And what's wrong with my beard? Don't you think it makes me look manly? As for my age, I'm only 24 years old this year. The same age as you, Matthew. Matthew shrugged. Say hello to Ms. Liz for me. He then left the security office. Trade area. Farm Purdue Street. Today was the opening day of the spring festival market. The residents of the farms and villages around Rolling Stone Town had gathered here. The streets were crowded with people. Matthew squeezed through an ox cart full of white radishes and lettuce leaves. He arrived at a corner of the market. Under the shack. A young man with long hair was glancing at the waists of the people passing by with flickering eyes. Jeff. Stop looking. No one can save you if you steal again. Matthew slapped him on the shoulder. Jeff was shocked. Matthew, is that you? Uh, I don't intend to steal anything. I'm just looking.